selling products, marketing yourself, like speaking, like growing your business, increasing revenue. Everybody's talking about things and they all make sense. And a lot of times they're things I haven't thought of. Um, everyone's a different personality type too, which is always amazing. I love hanging out with people, but it's always better in my opinion to hang out with people who aren't like you. And so there are so many people in that group that are just not like me. And I'm like, oh, your thought process is weird. Like you made a spreadsheet? What's that like? <laughs> Are you there, Dave? I can't hear you, Dave. Can't see or hear you, Dave. I'd like to meet you though. I hear you. <laughs> Do you have Hey Dave, what's up? I was like, oh crap. Yeah, I totally daylight I, savings to kill. I totally forgot. I was like, I was like, oh right. That's it's not two it's not three hours anymore. It's two hours now, right? Um, so Jesse, this is Dave. Dave, this is Jesse. Dave, nice to meet you. <clears throat> Dave is uh, in Vancouver. He is a motion design uh, super whiz. Um, I'll let you nice. continue on your intro there, Dave. Yeah, so I just run a, a, a small motion studio here in Vancouver. Um, sort of cut my teeth in Vancouver, in, uh, in LA uh, for the first eight years. And uh, now I've settled up here in 2003, 2002, nice. 2003. So yeah. I'm, so, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know you. And uh, it's okay. This interview, I feel like I just walked in on a conversation. <laughs> you did. You literally just walked in. You just like, just opened the door and said, "Hey guys, here I am." Um, and just found out today that he is no longer doing his day job. Nice, congratulations! Not, not totally by- got fired today. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, a level of transparency and trust and friendship that is happening right now. <laughs> deep. You guys are deep already. <laughs> but, you, but you already have uh, a couple other jobs kind of, right? It's not like yeah, that's true. you don't yeah. have anything to go to. No, I, I, you know, I was just telling Mario that we have, uh, my wife and I, we have some runway and some time. It came at a really great time though, because on Monday morning, we are taking our kids on a week long trip to Disney World. So nice, perfect timing. You have that in the pipeline. It's like Friday comes, job's gone. You're like, well, I guess we're still going to Disney World. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the happiest place on earth, man. <laughs> it really is. It's going to be great. Thank goodness it's, we already paid for everything. That's what oh, I'm saying. Nice. Um, there you go. <laughs> so are you freelance or have you been freelance uh, on the side? Have you been doing a side hustle or, or is your YouTube channel? I was. Your... Yeah. So I was doing um, kind of like freelancing on the side for a while. Uh, for the last three years, I've been running my YouTube channel. So I just hit 90,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh, wow. Congratulations. So, thank you. Yeah. So I'm trying to hit 100 by the end of the year. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, totally doable. Um, yeah, totally doable. We'll see how it goes. And um, so that takes a lot of my time. And then when I'm feeling like completely masochistic, I take like side work on top of my day job and the YouTube stuff. Um, and those are the times when I look, definitely look my age. Uh, those are the weeks and the months <laughs> where the gray hairs come in full force. So, but now um, that's definitely going to be like one of the strategies moving forward is just to open myself up for work. Um, and start offering, you know, my time services to people, which is cool. So I, I don't know if you should be doing that. Honestly, I think you should just dive full on 100% into YouTube land and see what the heck happens by the end of the year. I mean, if you have, yeah. do, you, do you have enough runway that you could, you guys could be okay until the end of the year? Uh, what's cool is like, I have some sponsored deals and projects and stuff that I took on that could, you know, if you think about it, like financially could float us until January. Okay. So, um, and that's literally all this came about like two hours ago when I found out I lost my job. So I walked into the house from my office here and sat down and talked to my wife and she was like, okay, like, what do you think we should do? What should we do? And it's definitely, that was one of like the first thoughts was like, we just, maybe we should go for it. Maybe we just, maybe we just, um, maybe we just go after that dream situation that I've been wanting, which is, I love doing client work. So like, Hey, like I would love to do 30% client work. 70% of like my time would be spent selling products, courses, 
um, continuing to grow like the YouTube presence, that kind of stuff. So, um, and then the end end result goal would be, I'd really in like the next five to six years, like to be writing and speaking and traveling and doing that. Um, and then the end end result would be to be like Tim Ferriss. I'm not just kidding. Um, for and just, but, just do things for live in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. Just go, Whatever. just go kickbox in Thailand and write books <laughs> about how awesome my life is. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's perfect. Now it's perfect timing. You only it have four hours. the perfect time. It's like, I, I only have four hours of work to do now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It works out great. I got to make it really efficient. So, um, so yeah, that's definitely a conversation we had at least about like the right now, what to do is like, uh, I, I think we are going to go that route, but at the same time, just to be wise, um, like I was telling Mario, revamp that resume, like <laughs> revamp that website and just put the feelers out and see if if there's any like if there's a better option you know so we'll see and say it sounds like you're pretty well positioned as far as youtube goes because at least from from the little that i know about the youtube world when people get close to that 100k mark it's um it's that point where you can like make a living uh where you have enough influence especially if you have a following you know that's that's a loyal following um, and people are buying products and you're offering things like products or courses or right. whatever. Um, so maybe this is, this is a kind of a blessing in disguise and, you know, it's Could that be. thing that you, the little push that you needed to, to get out of the nest and, and fly. Which was crazy. Cause before you jumped on Mario and I were talking about motivators and I was saying, one of the things is putting myself out there publicly and having no mm. choice to like move forward or not. So like, maybe this is one of those things that's like, it's a catalyst that says you have to move forward down this direction. Um, definitely could. I just need to, it's, it's always, it's hilarious. I'm, um, you know, I have like, I'm in a mastermind. We have quarterly goals that we all hold each other accountable to. So, you know, my Q4 goals for this year, we're going to be like, ah, it's going to be kind of hard to make, but now it's like, most times wide open. They hit all of them <laughs> on my whiteboard right there. So, <laughs> That feels really, really good. So um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be awesome. I, I think I'm definitely going to, at least in the next month, have a lot more time to push towards that direction. And um, if I was to like 5X, you know, 5X or 10X, like what I'm doing currently, it could become pretty viable pretty quickly, maybe. So how did you get, how did you, how many people are in your mastermind group? What, what brought that about? How come you, how come you decided to do that? And um, what have been, the kind of overall benefits from, from doing that? I literally got invited to a mastermind, which is I think a group of seven or eight people right now. Um, and we meet up once a week. Uh, we have a Slack channel. We meet up and do a video chat once a week for about an hour. Um, and I was invited to it by an internet friend, somebody who literally just reached out on Twitter uh, like last year, just said, Hey, I saw some of your videos. You seem like a cool guy. Would love to like have a digital coffee sometime. You know, here's what I do. It's like, cool. Awesome. So we just chatted like for a time or two, we talked cameras, we talked coffee and, and I was like, Hey, I have a new digital friend. This is rad. <laughs> and then, you know, six to eight months down the line, he reached back out and said, Hey, I'm part of this mastermind group. Um, you know, we all encourage each other, hold each other accountable, challenge each other. Is that something you want to be a part of? Invited me in and you know, I've been there, I've been in the mastermind for the last like four months. What has been blowing my mind and been really great about the mastermind is um, everybody that's in the group is like in an industry that is related, but not the same industry. So like there is another designer in the group, but she does more like graphic design, branding and stuff. And that's not really necessarily my wheelhouse. I like to do more like UI design, UX design, uh, like mobile application stuff. Um, you know, and there's people who do, there's two people who do SEO, but one of them is like niche in like the wedding SEO industry. And another one is kind of a generalist of SEO. There's content writers and a guy who runs like a, a, a large development shop. So everybody is slightly related. And so it's like everything that everybody says makes sense. It's all in the same somewhat general umbrella. Um, and they're all entrepreneurs. They're all running some sort of either main hustle or side hustle. And um, the bringing together of that many minds um, has just been awesome. And every week, uh, everyone shares their highs and their lows. And then one person each week is on the hot seat where they say, here's what I'm struggling with or dealing with. And I need answers on this right now. And they get seven perspectives on it. They get seven people asking them questions and helping them to facilitate like just thought process on everything. 
what's always cool is like you would think, well, you know, in seven more weeks, I'll get my hot seat again and, and I'll get some, I'll glean some information, but it's not anytime somebody else has their hot seat and ask a question or going through something, I'm like, holy crap, that like, that's awesome. I'm going to take that. These are all gems, you know? So whether it's like selling products, marketing yourself, like speaking, like growing your business, increasing revenue, everybody's talking about things and they all make sense. And a lot of times they're things I haven't thought of. Um, everyone's a different personality type too, which is always amazing. I love hanging out with people, but it's always better in my opinion to hang out with people who aren't like you. And so there are so many people in that group that are just not like me. And I'm like, oh, your thought process is weird. Like you made a spreadsheet. What's that like? <laughs> like, you know, so um, Mastermind has been nothing but awesome. My wife has even commented on it. Like, I am so happy you found them and are in that group with them. Like it's, it's, she said it, how rad it is for us and for me. So any, any tips for uh, Dave and myself who, Dave, you have like, you have a hundred followers on, on YouTube now, right? Subscribers. <laughs> yeah. I have 150, buddy. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That is, I will say more than a hundred more than me. So we'll just say that <laughs> tips, not, not so much tricks. I mean, I think we talked about a little bit about consistency earlier. Um, I think the consistency yeah. is probably the, the biggest thing, right? Um, right now, what do you think is like the biggest, um, like what would be the biggest um, piece of advice that you could give, say Dave and I? I think it's uh, engagement. So actually engaging with the 150 people who have chosen to subscribe to your channel um, I have 90,000 subscribers. Um, I put out two videos a week. Most videos get anywhere between, I don't know, a thousand to 5,000 views, um, within like the first three or four months. Um, most videos get anywhere between 10 and 150 comments. I respond to every single comment I always have. And I always will. Uh, I respond to every single comment by hand. I don't use a bot or anybody else to do it. Like it just, it has to come from me. Um, and the more intimate you can in, engage with people, the better you're going to be. I want to create, I, I didn't necessarily set out to have 90,000 subscribers. I set out to really create that model, like a thousand true fans. And so even though I have a larger mass of people, I'm still driving towards the goal of creating a fan base of a thousand true fans. Um, and they're not going to be that way unless you, unless you spend some time. I have people that leave comments, um, they've been leaving comments consistently on my videos for the last three years. And I feel like I have, they're like people I know every time I see their little avatar on YouTube, I'm like, you're back again. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, we have little inside jokes, even in the comments and stuff. It's weird. Like I, for a while, I really hated it when people would refer to like them building their community in YouTube. I'm like, shut up. What a buzzword. You're building a community. But now it's like, I'm like, Oh crap. I have like a little community. <laughs> And there's certain people that I know and know me, like there's certain people that have my back. So if somebody like says something rude, you'll see like five comments underneath them. Like, shut up. He's always so awesome. Why would you be? <laughs> I'm like, I don't even say anything, bro. Cause my people got my back. So it, but that has come from engagement. I'm starting to try to engage more on Instagram and push content onto Instagram now as well. And the thing that I've found was, um, um, I get, it's the same thing. The more like intimate you can get. And, and so I leave people like audio messages in Instagram. Like I do like all that kind of stuff. Um, and I try to, I guess the rule of thumb in engagement is I always just try to think of everything in the digital realm, like a real world experience. So like you go into a room of people, that's Twitter, right? Like it's a big cocktail party. You don't just start shouting about yourself. It's better to pull people off to the side, introduce yourself, say hi. Like, you're less, you're less of a jerk. Like in, if, if, if you just introduce yourself privately to people and start forming relationships, same thing on it, like on Instagram or Twitter, everything, everything just has to be treated like real world. Like you would never do some of these weird things that so many people do online in a real world scenario. Like, you know, everyone would look at you like you have Asperger's and Tourette's. Like, I, I think Mario and I actually are pretty good at that, right? I know for myself, yeah. for uh, both on Instagram and uh, and for YouTube, I, I definitely, um, you know, engage with every comment, every anyone who's left a comment. Um, mm -hmm. 
just I guess I mean we're obviously early in our in our stages of uh, of developing our stuff, and even for me, finding a lane because I'm kind of like. Mm-hmm talking about using different pieces of Adobe software, like the stuff that I use and just kind of sharing, you know, the little bits that I know, but trying to kind of niche down and trying to find a specialty. Um, Because I don't want to stay in this area where I'm just like kind of shotgun sort of approach to everything. Right. Um, So I think I do need to niche down a bit, uh, at least for for my YouTube. Have you found that, like how long have you been doing it and, and have you found like, when did you find that place where you felt like, oh, yeah, this is my sweet spot? And it was probably like, I don't know, a year and a half or something into it. It took me to really find that sweet spot of all, like, not just like the type of content or the type of user that I'm, I'm making content for, but also like length of content, um, energy in my content. My personality finally came out in my content. So all of these things after about like a year and a half of, of, of making content consistently started to kind of surface where I was like, you know, I found a certain groove. Like I always intro my videos the same way. And I always say the same like keywords in the outro of my video, the same way that that goes into like less guesswork and less like thinking about what I need to do for certain portions of the videos. And that's helpful, but it's also like, it's just like people get used to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of those old broadcasting TV like, like strategies, they carry over and they do work. Like I'm not trying to make my YouTube channel a TV show, but you know, consistent like release schedule people. Like if I say on my channel, new video every Wednesday and Saturday, which I do, and I don't put out a video on Wednesday, which sometimes I don't, I mess up. I failed and people have tuned in probably and gone, what what the hell? Like Mm -hmm. there's no video here. You know, so if you can't be as con- that consistent, you need to generalize a little bit until you can. I was just telling somebody else this, like, until you can be that steady, then just say new videos each week. If you can't actually stand by new videos each week, go videos whenever I can. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, just being like really me. honest and transparent until you can start to be the person that people expect you or want you to be. Um, yeah. yeah, so it took a while to find, find out all those things. And there's a lot of little things that you learn as you go as well like Mm -hmm. you learn you know what works and what doesn't work like i have a fairly obnoxious and outgoing personality and i've found it's really weird when i dig into my analytics um the videos where i make a little quip or joke in the first 30 seconds before my little kind of intro music thing hits actually get more engagement Mm -hmm. um and more watch time for the duration of the video that's just what works for me Like people have come to expect that and like that out of me. The ones that I don't, people go, I've even had people in the comments go, no joke. (laughs) So so it's like, you know, give to a certain extent, give the people what they want, you know, without compromising and sacrificing who you are. That's good. I think uh, one of the things that, that Jesse mentioned earlier, Dave was um, it took him that long to kind of like, really settle into his own skin and really just kind of like be comfortable being himself. And I think that's a, that's a big thing for, I think we, we had Dave and I, Dave, you and I kind of talked about that early on when you were talking about like um, your first couple of videos about like doing the tutorials and stuff. It was like a lot easier if you had somebody in your head that you were talking to and doing the, doing the tutorial for than just kind of like, talking to the camera and you're like, you're like this deer in the headlights and it's like, nothing's happening. Nothing's coming out, you know? So, right. So much easier. It feels like you're talking to that person versus talking to this inanimate like camera yeah, object yeah, yeah. thing. <laughs> so, yeah. So the ones that were, where I was making videos specifically for like to solve a specific problem because a friend <laughs> of mine didn't know how to do this or was using something inefficiently and I made a video about it, and I was like, oh, yeah, so, so-and-so, like, in my mind, I'm thinking, so-and-so, you should do this, this, and this, and um, this might help you out. Like, that just, like, helped me to focus in on, like, you know, um, who I was talking to versus, like, this is a camera. I feel like an idiot <laughs> sitting in this room yeah. by myself. There's a huge difference between talking to yourself and talking to somebody who you have a personal relationship with yeah, at some point there is a, a, a flip that switches and you start to have a personal relationship with your camera <laughs> uh, where like i know my camera's menu settings inside and out like i can you know i can tell like when it's like out of focus when i'm like linking it to my phone and and like 
getting like a mirror or wireless view of it and stuff. Like just have like such an intimate thing. And now I kind of sort of, I connect it with all of the comments and the people who mm. subscribe to my channel. Like I almost can kind of like before, I, like my camera has a flip screen so I can kind of position myself and set myself up. Um, I don't even use it anymore now. I just make sure that everything's like focused and I flip that thing back in because it's like I, I, I've gotten used to working without it. Now I'm looking in directly into the lens um, and seeing people there. And it just happens. That's weird. And then you've gotten, you've gotten intensely more engaging too, like because of that, because there's no, there's no distraction of your, your face, right? Like right. Um, you just, you're, you know where you're looking, you know, what, you know, you actually know what's happening at, at the moment you're, you're, you're doing it, you're recording. And it takes, you know, it's yeah. kind of like being on set, like, you know, they're like, Oh, don't ever look at the camera. You just kind of like act natural, blah, blah. And it's really weird for when you, whenever you say act natural, people freeze up and they get this, they get this. They get, <laughs> what do I do with my hands? What what? Do I do? <laughs> this is natural. You know, it's like, yeah. So learning how to be natural is, is a huge asset and a huge, um, um, I think skill that you need to obtain over time. What's actually interesting, a way you can actually strengthen that skill is by being self-aware of how you talk and the things you say when you're with actual people, like you're having coffee with a friend. It's weird. It's, it's almost never happens that while you're talking to other people, you're self-assessing at the same time and going, how am I talking? Like, how am I holding myself? Like, where are my hands? Like, you know, we don't usually, it's all happening on autopilot, right? Like we're into yeah. the story, we're drinking coffee, we're having a good time. But if you start observing yourself a little bit, like, oh, interesting. Like, I'm really excited. Like, nothing's hindering me. Like, I'm not ashamed to, you know, inflect my voice or like be really charismatic about something. And then you get in front of the camera and welcome to my <laughs> YouTube channel. And like, so you just freeze up. It's like, do a little homework and self-assess. I even, yeah. I did that a little bit. I would come back after meeting with somebody for coffee and I'd write notes and say like, you know, why is it so easy for me to make eye contact with my friend at coffee, but I have such a hard time making eye contact with a camera. Like, okay, that's something I need to work on, eye contact. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> one of the things that helps is uh, batch recording on days that you are already on. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of the time. So I never actually record one video by itself. I'll always record two or three. And then I have the time to edit those, you know, for the week after. Um, so that's a big one, but there, there, <laughs> there does come times when you are not on and you, I have one of two choices, which is, um, I either am, I know that video is going to be not so great. My personality is going to be off. Um, and people have noticed when I am like, people are like, why? Like <laughs> I've had people DM me and go, everything all right? Are you okay? <laughs> like they're worried about me cause I'm not as energetic as usual. I actually, um, before video, I will watch something. Um, whether it be a movie or stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. something that makes me laugh, brings me joy, and puts me in tip. In, in a mindset uh, that I can then pass that along. It's really hard to offer so somebody something that you don't have, that you're mm -hmm. not filled with. So, you know, um, and this again, this could be anything. Whatever stokes your fire, like right. you watch a TED Talk and, and it just fills you with confidence or excitement or joy or knowledge or whatever it is fill yourself first. So t take the 15 or 20 minutes. What's weird is that we live in such a space where like, I'm about to make a YouTube video. I can pull up YouTube, watch a bunch of stuff that fills me up and then go out and film a YouTube video. So it's, it's just, it's, there's limitless possibilities. Um, so who are some of your, um, early influences and are, are there any, if there are in people influencing you now, what do they influence you for if it's not personality and, and things like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, early on, I needed somebody like a Gary Vee to kick my butt. Um, and then I have since decided that Gary Vee is trying to kill me. So he has ceased to be <laughs> as much of an inspiration to me, although I will tune in sometimes. He's got great content. He's got great insights. Um, but I, I, I think he is for the days when I need some motivation for sure. <laughs> so that's one thing is before I mention any of these, it's like there's the right people for the job to inspire you or motivate you towards certain things. So um, uh, Rand Segal, he runs a channel called Flux. Um, he's very entrepreneur business focused about everything he does. He actually challenges me to think about less about my nerdness and my love of design software and my love of like mixing typographies as much as like, why are you making money off that though? And so like, 
that's always a little bit of a conviction for me. Like this is a business and I shouldn't feel bad about it being a business. Everything that the future does is like excellent. Um, I like uh, not, uh, not all mornings, but some mornings I will read tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss um, just to get like a quick one page snippet of somebody who does something excellent. So that's a really cool resource that I, I like a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, I read my Bible daily because that's always a constant source of inspiration for me as far as don't get so caught up in all of this work and money and business and success mentality that you cease to be the person who God made me to be. So it's kind of like a humble myself each and every day. That's like always a huge inspiration. There's a lot of people, uh, other people though, um, there's actually, so I was just on her YouTube channel the other day. She's got like 500 subscribers. Her name is Eliza UX. Sometimes people inspire me because they teach me that like I'm making too much out of it. Like my expectations are too high or I'm too much of a perfectionist. So I've been learning a lot from like her and like smaller channels. Um, um, and then there's another gal who has a channel currently. Her name's Charlie Marie. And um, I hate, <laughs> I hate vlogging so much. I don't like it. I'd rather set the camera up and screencast and show you something in my workflow or teach you something. Um, but it's really fun. I like seeing into, into people's lives. And so she's a source of inspiration that said, like tells me that people do want to see that stuff. I'm interested in seeing how her week of work goes. I'm just, I'm really bad at, at doing it myself. So all of these have little pockets and pieces of things that I <clears> wish <throat> I could do or didn't realize I was capable of. And so, yeah, there's lots of stuff out there. Did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. I think um, just that, that whole idea of not not being where you want to be. So why would people want to like collaborate with me kind of thing is um, that was kind of brought to light with by, by someone that I was watching too. And, and they, they have, you know, a small following and, but they've been doing, you know, they put out a lot of content, but like, you know, the kid, he's, he's a young guy. He's 21. He's in, he's in London and he's interviewed Steven Sagmeister. He's interviewed Aaron Draplin. Like, and at that time that he was interviewing these guys, like, he had no subscribers. Like everybody's just like, yeah, sure. Right. I'll be at your podcast. And he has like the gift of, of asking, you know, it's like, it's like, Hey, you, you want to be on my podcast? And everybody's like, yeah, sure. You're, you're kind of a fun guy. Let's, let's do it. You know? So yeah. he's, he's made so many connections and he's just made so many, uh, you know, friends by doing that. And, and it's just because he's, he's brash and he asks. Right. And I think we yeah. have to do more, we have to do more of that and stop being so afraid. I mean, the worst thing that people could say is no, Right. I mean, I'm like, I learned this the other day and then I reached out, like I jumped on, it literally took me 45 seconds. I got on Instagram. I went to Rancigal's like page. I DM'd him. I went, Hey, want to do a collab together? And five minutes later, he was like, that sounds great. I love your stuff. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this could happen so long ago. Such a big, why, why was I making such a big deal out of this? Like, you know, he seems like a rad guy. He's showing himself to be it's this. What is the deal? Why am I so stuck in this mode of not thinking I am worthy to talk to another person. Like he's just a person. I'm making too much yeah. out of people. Right. And it's yeah. like, I shouldn't do that. Like they're just people like me that are just doing their thing. What's your, what's your favorite thing to do with the kids besides take them to uh, Disney world when you're um, unemployed? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a very niche thing. Uh, <laughs> well, Hey, we've all got to have our won't, thing. Yeah. Hopefully that won't happen too many more times in my parental <laughs> experience. Um, um, we have a trampoline like right out here in my backyard. And so throughout the day, it's like take a little 15, 20 minute breaks and just jump on the trampoline with the kids, lay on our backs, like, you know, feel the sun on our faces, ask them about life. That's a really fun thing to do. Um, they are all, they're doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with me. So they go to their class, I go to my class and then they come home and all BJJ goes out the door and WWE wrestling comes in <laughs> and they just, so we like to wrestle and like, and, yeah. and play a lot. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big one. And uh, my kids are huge, like video game nerds. So we like to play video games together. Um, yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. He's, he's the, he's the veteran dad here, Dave. Okay. He's the veteran kids? dad. Yeah, well, they're like my daughter's nine, but she's like on the verge of being twenty-one. So <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Was there a point where like you were getting some traction or getting some, where it just kind of like went from 
from kind of like, you know, a little bit of growth to like, when you're like, whoa, wait a minute, maybe, yeah. maybe I'm doing something right here. Um, I, it was, so zero to a thousand is like the slog Artist. of your life. <laughs> um, it's hard. It is trudging work to get to a thousand. Um, it took me a year and a, like a year and a half or year to get from zero to a thousand. Um, then it took me a year to get from 1000 to 10,000. Mm. And in this last year, I've gone from 10,000 to 90,000. Wow. So, and I haven't actually, I mean, like we were saying earlier, I've probably improved. I've gotten better at what I do. I'm more comfortable in front of the camera. Um, maybe I'm more consistent about it. I haven't changed anything drastically. I didn't just start doing something. It really is a snow. It's a snowball effect and it's really just momentum. So once you get the momentum, you can't take it for granted. You have to keep going with it. I did have like a real a lapse uh, around last Christmas where I was like, I'm taking Christmas off. I'm not, I made like one video over the span of six weeks and I saw like a dip and it was mm -hmm. hard to reclaim that dip. So mm -hmm. it's just like going to the gym or like doing anything else, right? Like you don't use it and you lose it. And so, but the momentum is good. You just got to yeah. stick with it and it'll right. come. Um, you'll learn you'll learn about yourself, what you need to do, your subscribers and people who are commenting, they'll kind of lead you and guide you. And through the process, it, it, as long as you stay inquisitive, you'll be looking around for the right type of content to make and, and how it matches with you and your personality and your channel and stuff like that. But really, it really is, there's very few overnight successes like the Peter McKinnons on YouTube mm -hmm. that put out five videos and got like a million subscribers, the Casey Neistat's like those yeah. guys. There's very few of those. There's way more overnight successes that have been doing it for years and years and years, yeah. but you just, you just heard about them now kind of right. thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's consistency over time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always curious what, uh, it, cause some people are like, Oh, this, it clicks for them. And then they, whether it's habit, whether it's like, oh, doing it every day helped me or doing it on this particular day, you know, once a week helped me or, you know, some, you learn these little things and then you apply them and that was like the game changer for them or whatever. So yeah. uh, I'm sure you had a lot of those game changer kind of at least micro game changer moments throughout. Uh, there were some micro things like that made life easier, that made me more motivated. Like once I started systematizing like things a little bit like, Hey, I've created a template. I'm just going to reuse the same template. Or once I got off my high horse and stopped searching for custom, you know, like free licensed music every single week and being like, you know, what? I'm going to use the same music in every video for the next six months and then I'll switch it up. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to relinquish a little bit of control and with, with relinquishing a little bit of control comes the freedom to make things more and quicker and more consistently. But again, it's that perfectionist mentality thing. Um, yeah. for some of it's probably kind of good, like, um, you know, you have to learn those things. You have to go through the process. But at some point, I think probably the biggest change is when you wise up and learn that, like, you can't, you can't stay this kind of course forever if you want to move forward at all. all right. Yeah. Cool. Huge. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Momentum. That's our, that's our, uh, that's going to be like our theme. Yeah. Momentum. I if, if you cannot stay the course, you, you, can't, you can't stay the way you are if you want to be somewhere else, right? Right. Love it. Thanks a lot, man. Um, it's good to see your face. I'm glad Thank you guys you. met. Hopefully you guys can, can meet up other times. Um, and yeah, uh, I think also just, let's just not be afraid to ask people to hang out with us virtually because you know we're all just people right <laughs> yep absolutely jesse how do you get yourself on <laughs> how do i get myself on <laughs> <laughs> what kind of podcast is what this is going on right now? wait a minute um, yeah no